Mike here from Salty Cape, and today I want to talk about how to quickly fillet and skin a striped bass. Now, we didn't catch this guy too long ago. He's about 33, maybe 33 and a half inches. He's been on ice, but as you can see, he's still soft. Ideally, you want to wait till your striper has a little rigor mortis set in. Um, but with a sharp knife, uh, you can still do a, a reasonable job flaying this fish. Now, the reason why I say a sharp knife is uh, when they're still, I'll call them soft as opposed to stiff from the rigor mortis, their meat tends to be uh, a little more rubbery. So you'll have more resistance with cutting through the fish. And so uh, this is a sharp knife, but I'm gonna just make sure it's extra sharp real quick. And so this is a little sharpener um, that I like. It's just a little handy pocket sharpener. And then I might use this intermittently throughout filleting this fish. You know, again, it's better when um, the fish is, you know, in a more stiff situation, but I'm gonna just sharpen and hone this knife. Now, cleaning a striper is very similar to filleting any like fin fish style fish. Starts with a cut behind the head. Step two is you're gonna work along the top of the fish, working your way down. And then maybe step three, you're gonna poke through the other side here and finish the fillet. Now the tricky part on a striper uh, for a lot of folks is dealing with the rib cage. Um, and so that's sort of a, you know, just sort of a slower spot where you sort of work up and around the rib cage. There's not a lot of good meat down in this section of the striper. We're really interested in the top loin here and then the lower loin that starts about right here, right in front of where this bottom fin begins and through here. So the prime meat on a striper is this top area and then the lower section back here, as you can see down the backbone. So now let's start with step one. I'm gonna cut behind its head, nice little angle. Get through those thicker bones at the head of the fillet. Now you can feel stripers have a very pronounced rib cage here, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that portion right here. Now what I'm gonna do is just flip the fish so it's easier for me to work down the back of the fish. Now, the slow and steady wins the race here. And I'm just working my way down right along the top of the fin. So I'm continuing my way down back to here. Now at some point, sort of want to work your way the knife through to the fish. And now see I've come out the other side I'm gonna change the angle so I'm facing slightward down. I'm just gonna work my way, finish the fillet. So this bottom part is done. Now, you see, now I'm just gonna slowly work down the back of this fish. Now again, ideally when you fillet a striper, you want it to be on ice longer than we have here. I'm already in the doghouse at home, so I'm not gonna wait till this guy stiffens up. Just gonna keep going. I'm just gonna keep the sharp knife. A couple hits goes a long way. Now this is the rib cage I was talking about here. See how I'm just using the tip of the knife and I'm just working, you can hear those bones, I'm just working over those bones. Just taking my time. And see now I've come through over here. Sometimes you'll get a little bone left in the flay, but we can fix that after. And just work through. And then it's your fillet. Not my best job, but it's definitely good enough. Can't get them perfect every time. Now here, that's all rib cage. I just sort of bypass that. And I just have the meat of the filet. Put these side by side. Now the great thing about striped bass is the yield on this fish. So look at all this meat and how big that filet. And that's enough for a number of, number of folks. You could feed a whole dinner, a whole family, but just this one side of the fish. So you can see how much yield this 33 inch fish has. 
Now I personally keep maybe one, sometimes two stripers a season. It's sort of a special treat for me to keep a fish. Um, I tend to release my stripers and you know, focus on keeping the more plentiful ground fish such as scup and sea bass or fluke, tatag. Um, but striped bass are definitely um, a wonderful fish to eat. And um, you know, there's plenty of them around to you know, keep one or two throughout the season, but you know, it's, um, it's a great fish to have as a special treat. I'm gonna stop yapping and get cutting. Now for the Bisa. So here I have the striper filet, still has the skin on. A couple of bones have found their way to the head of the filet. So I'm gonna do a V-notch here. Then the last step to skin it, I'm gonna start at the tail and work forward. And I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of a nub. So that's sort of the outline of what you're about to see. Now I'm gonna to go to step one and cut my V-notch. I'm going to cut my little nub section here. That's going to allow my fingers to get some purchase on the slippery fillet. I'm going to hold it in place and work the knife. Now you can see with this eight inch blade, it's just the right amount to get the whole width of the fillet, but not too much where it's cumbersome. Now here's the part. As I get further down the fillet, I get more and more resistance with the knife. So I'm going to get a good grab on this skin here, again using that nub, and now I'm pulling the fillet towards me as I'm pushing the knife forward with just a little bit of a bend in the blade. And I'm working my way through. You know, out, caught up on a bone or something, out the fillet. And cut out this little V-notch here, usually a, some sort of ligament will catch it. That's where the bones are at the head of the fillet. Now it's a bone-free piece of fish. Now this is the moment where I just will clean anything up. This little bone made its way in here. Sometimes the disadvantage to a really sharp knife is it'll cut through bones when you don't want it to cut through bones. And uh, now, this, considering this fish, this fillet, skinned at this point, just cleaning it up a little bit, now I'll slice this into you know, portion size chunks. So here's the head of the filet, this top loin here. Freeze is better when it's in small pieces or smaller pieces, sits in the fridge nicely. You don't want a filet all twisted and turned up, crammed in a Ziploc bag. So that's gonna give you uh, textural issues later when you go to cook it. And now this filet is turned into four nice striper steaks. Now my favorite way to cook these, I guess I don't have a favorite way, but how I cook it most often is I'll pan roast these. I get them nice and dry, maybe a little salt on them, a mix of canola oil and clarified butter, get that pan nice and hot, put the filet skin side down, let it get a nice crust, and then I'll have the oven preheated at four, 425, and I'll just pop the whole pan in, maybe Drizzle a little of the butter oil mixture on top of the plate, and then I'll get that crust, and then I'll get creative with a, some sort of sauce or salsa from my garden. Mm -hmm.